Come, Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, cast your fire, give us new birth. Come with your power. Created for Christ and through Christ. And this is the beauty of our lives. Friends, this is why we are created to be all for Christ. But in what we do, if we do it for ourselves, just to be pleased with it ourselves and to be praised by others, we are like the man that prophet Haggai talks of in Haggai chapter 1 verse 6 a man who puts all that he earns all his wages that he labored for in a bag with holes at the end you get nothing there is no merit and therefore let your lives and my lives not be counterproductive in living for ourselves with self love but let us love the creator for which we were created and then we will no longer be putting all that we labored for in a bag with holes live for Jesus who lived and died and as he promised on the third day he rose again and he reigns forever he is alive he's reigning king he reigns over your life today tomorrow and forever there is a great reward for all those who are tired and who toil. Souls, tire, untiring souls, tired souls who tire for the love of Christ. for your glory, O oh God, to be revealed. Jesus. You turn, you take our sins away, O oh God. You give, you gave your life away for us. You came down, you 
saved us through the cross. Our hearts are changed because of your great love. You live, you die, you said in three days you will rise. You did, you were alive. You rule, you reign, you said you're coming back again. Sing your praise And all the earth will sing your praise And all the earth will sing your praise Today we lift our entire life into your hands and we await your glorious, O oh God, coming. You said, Lord, all this would happen. There would be famines, there would be plagues, there would be rumors of war, there would be so much of distress, Lord. And every heart will have a question and every tongue will confess that you alone are Savior. You alone are God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we are so grateful today. And all that we want to do is lift our hands and lift our lives to you in praise. And Lord, here we are just lifting our lives into your hands. For tomorrow, oh God, is in your hands. We do not know, oh God, what tomorrow will bring, but you see it. And so we lift it all into your hands. Our future, O oh God, is what you mold and you lead us into for your glory. Future 
is in your hands. For days we cannot see, O oh God, we praise you. For the life that you have for us in store from all eternity and all times, O oh God. May it be a revelation as we walk with you. For days we cannot see for all that's yet to be the trials we may have to face when we'll be leaning on your grave it will be your strength that saves us your love that makes us strong and through it all we'll sing the song here we are lifting our hands to you here we are giving you thanks for all you do as we pray and worship your holy name you are here dwelling within
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 16, verses 13 to 19. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that a son of man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I said to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 My dear fathers, sisters, and brothers, the gospel today has a very special message. It was a blessed time for Simon Peter and the other apostles. The apostles chosen by Jesus as we are chosen. And Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, you are blessed. And Jesus is telling us today, Jesus will continue to tell us, you are blessed. And there are four reasons for this blessedness. One, we are chosen to be with Jesus during these days. This particular event of Jesus asking the disciples, who do people say that I am? And Simon Peter proclaiming that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah. When St. Luke reports this event to us, St. Luke speaks of a prayer experience of Jesus and the disciples. St. Luke tells us, chapter 9, Verses 18 onwards, St. Luke tells us, Jesus was praying in a certain place, alone. And the apostles were with him. A very strange description, right? If Jesus was praying alone, how could the apostles be with him? Well, it's very clear. The apostles were with him, but Jesus was not with the apostles. Jesus was 
with the father and the apostles knew that the master was with the father and this is what we are called to be during these days of blessedness to be with the father to be with jesus all that we have to do here is to be with the lord we have come away from our places from our ministries to the presence of the lord the one thing we have to do here is to be with and that's what we are chosen for as in mark tells us mark chapter 3 verse 13 the apostles were chosen to be with him and these are the days the lord has chosen for us to be with him theologians would distinguish time between chronos and kairos greek words chronos and kairos chronos is the ordinary time the time that slips away often without much meaning ordinary time but different is kairos kairos is a time of god's intervention into our lives the kairos this is a kairos for us because god has chosen every one of us to be with him during this week let us open our hearts in silence silence to the world absent to the world and present to god opening our hearts closing our hearts to the things of the world opening our hearts to god for god to speak to us for god to do great things in our lives moses was with god in the mountain when moses came down after 40 days of prayer in the mountain there was a shine on the face of moses the face of moses was so glowing the people knelt down and the people requested moses moses prophet have you a word for us from god you know we are leaders whether priests or religious or lay leaders we are leaders often there is rebellion in our communities in our parishes in our prayer groups often there is dissent often there is a lot of conflict and we wonder what to do we want to discipline them we want to insist they should obey us and we want to compel obedience by all different ways no a wrong method when moses came down from the mountain and people saw a glow on the face of moses the people knelt down and the people said prophet you speak we are here to obey they obeyed willing to obey because they knew moses had a word from god moses was with god what moses is going to tell us is not his own ideas but the word he received from god here we are 
to receive a word from God for our people. We don't have to discipline anyone. We don't want to, we don't need to compel anyone to obedience. When people come to know we where we are with the, with the Lord, the people would understand the word we say is from God. And they would obey. They would cooperate. If you and I, we are not with the Lord, if the people are not able to see a glow on our face, in our heart, in our life, of being with God, they would question us. They would disobey. They would challenge us. They will not kneel down before us. We want to be with the Lord. We want to get that word from our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And therefore, this is a time chosen. Chosen to be with the Lord. As Moses was chosen to be with the Lord. A second reason for the blessedness is it's a time of revelations. It's a time God is going to reveal. Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? The people say many things that Jesus is John the Baptist come alive or a great prophet like Jeremiah, a zealous prophet like Elijah. But Jesus was not concerned. He did not comment on anything that the people say that's not important for Jesus. But it is important for Jesus to know what you and I think about him. We are the leaders. We are the successors of the apostles. What we think about Jesus Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Who am I for you? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the Messiah for me. You are my Savior. You are the Son of God for me. And that's what I'm going to proclaim to the world. And that's when Jesus said, Simon, it is not flesh and blood that revealed this to you. What's flesh and blood? Flesh and blood are human ways, human means. It is not human ways, human means that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And so you are blessed. We are going to be blessed. This is a time of revelation. God speaking to our hearts. God whispering to our hearts. God speaking to us direct. And we waiting upon God to listen to the voice of God. And this is a time of revelation. My dear sisters and brothers, we must spend time in personal prayer. Let that be clear to us. It's not enough to listen to the talks. We should listen to our talks. But important, spend time. Spend time in the presence of God, waiting for revelation. We begin the day in the morning with the Eucharistic adoration, silent adoration. We will look at the face of Jesus and wait for a revelation. We wait for God to speak to our hearts. We end the day with silent Eucharistic adoration. In between, we have given a lot of time free, purposely, purposely, 
this week we spend our time with the lord give a chance for god to talk to our hearts we have a complaint and our complaint is we are not able to hear the voice of god we are not able to hear the voice of god not because god is not speaking but because we are not there to listen since we do not listen we complain god does not speak god is waiting to speak speak to us this week let's wait upon god to listen to the voice of god god will speak a time of blessedness because a time of revelation the third blessedness of this retreat the blessedness of proclaiming that jesus is the lord and savior our retreat is centered on jesus a total commitment to the lord we become leaders only because we are committed to the lord this is a beautiful passage jesus asking simon peter simon son of john do you love me three times the third time simon peter was grieved but whether simon peter was grieved or not jesus would continue to ask and demand an answer from simon peter demand an answer from him every time jesus said feed my flock feed my sheep feed my lambs but then not once did jesus ask simon peter simon son of john do you love my flock no that question was not asked the question asked was do you love me if you love me more than everything else i will give you my flock the one quality of a leader is to be committed committed to jesus so totally that we are ready to die for him live for him total commitment absolute commitment to the lord and we will proclaim a commitment to jesus a commitment to jesus in a very special way during our retreat the fourth blessedness our retreat is a time when jesus will give us a ministry that's what jesus said to simon peter i will give you the keys of the kingdom whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven a ministry was given we will be given a ministry by the lord every service in the church is a ministry no service in the church is a mere appointment is a mere activity but a ministry a ministry done for the lord a ministry that we do not take up but given to us by the lord and jesus will give us a ministry of course we have a ministry but do i know do i know clearly this ministry is given to me by the lord that i am exercising this ministry in the power of the holy spirit a ministry is always exercised in the power of the holy spirit we are not people recruited for a service no 
our qualification is not our education no a qualification for a ministry is the anointing anointing by the holy spirit pope paul the 6th so powerfully said this to us he said every ministry in the church is to be exercised to amaze the world but for this we must exercise our ministry in the power of the holy spirit if i am preaching my preaching is not in the power of my words not in the wisdom of my ideas no my preaching must be in the power of the holy spirit if i lay my hands on the on the sick and pray my ministry of healing is in the power of the holy spirit and we need a fresh anointing that our service may become a ministry for us let us enter into our retreat with great expectation we are not just come by chance or oh no we are brought and jesus said john 6:44 no one can come to me unless my father draws him the heavenly father has drawn every one of us into the presence of jesus for jesus to do something very special in our lives this time this blessed time this precious time let us understand the great significance of our retreat of our time with the lord and surrender ourselves in the hands of god that god's will that god's power that god's spirit may flow into us amen come holy spirit renew the face of the earth come holy spirit